Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear cadres, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to welcome you all to this online class of Islam and Moral Education. I am Muhammad Jahangir Hussain Badwari, lecturer in the Department of Islamic Studies from Borishal Karat College, Borishal. Boys, I have to remind you all the time about the current coronavirus COVID-19 situation. You know, it is getting worse all the time. Lots of people are dying every day. Nobody knows where death toll will mount. So as usual, I have to tell you, please maintain and observe cleanliness all the time. Wash your hands with sanitizer, have a bath regularly, keep your hands, mouth, teeth, hair, and clothes are clean all the time. Drink a lot of water, liquids every day. And you must be staying at home, staying safe and sound and staying healthy. If you ever have to go out, please make sure you are wearing a face mask. Boys, this is the last lesson we discussed in our last class. The topic was indolence. We came to know from that class about indolence and its harmful effects on human life. We also came to know from that class about riba and rishwa, that is interest and bribery. Why interest is haram in Islam, we came to know from that class. Also why bribery is forbidden in Islam, we came to know about that as well. So these were the last classes we had discussion about and we tried our level best to understand those topics from the Islamic viewpoint. This is class 10, chapter five, lesson six and seven. These are the topics that we are going to discuss today. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu. The two greatest Muslims and human beings after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These are the learning outcomes. By the end of today's class, you should be able to know about these things. And these objectives must be achieved before the end of the class. First, what is meant by Khulafa al-Rashidun? Secondly, you should be able to explain the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu an and his contribution to the preservation of Al-Quran. You will also be able to analyze the life of Umar radiallahu an, his conversion to Islam, his character. Well, our first point to discuss is Al Khulafa Al Rashidun. Al Khulafa Al Rashidun, these two words are Arabic. They are purely Islamic terms. Al Khulafa is plural, is singular Khalifa. Khalifa means vicegerent, representative, inheritor or deputy. We are the agents and Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the earth. The word Khalifa, it is also mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ Khalifa. When Allah said to the angels that I'm going to create my Khalifa on the face of the earth. So we find the word Khalifa 
here in this surah uh, of the Holy Quran. The other word is Ar-Rashidun. Ar-Rashidun, this word also singular. Is, uh, by the way, the Rashidun, this word is plural. It's singular is Rashid. Rashid means the rightly guided person. So if we combine both the words, it will come into the meaning that the rightly guided caliphs of Islam. And who are they? There are four caliphs of Islam, the rightly guided caliph Islam. Why they are called Khalafa ar Rashidun? Why are they rightly guided? Because after the death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they run all the affairs of the state according to the teachings of the Holy Quran and the ideals of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he left. So they are, there are four Khalifas, Abu Bakr, Ibn Abi Quhafa, Radiallahu Anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu an. All these four khalifas, they are all together called Khulafa al-Rashidun. All of them received the teachings and lessons of Islam directly from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They followed and imitated them properly in their own practical life. Therefore, their life and works are models for all of us for all the time. Now let's go to the first Khalifa of Islam. The first Khalifa of Islam is Abu Bakr radiallahu an, as we all know. He was born in 573 CE, Christian era, in the time class of the famous Quraysh tribe of Makkah. He was about three years younger than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His real name was Abdullah. He was given two famous titles. One is Siddiq, another is Atiq. Right from his early years, he had cultivated intimate friendship with the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Among the adult Muslims, he was the first to have embraced Islam. He used to keep constant company with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In dangers, depressions, and in all situations. The first title was given to him was a Siddiq. He was given the title a Siddiq because he believed in the Prophet ﷺ in his Mi'raj without any question. After returning to the Makkah, he went to the Kaaba and started describing the incident of Mi'raj to the people. Among those people, there, were, there was also Abu Jahal. When Abu Jahal heard this, by nature, he did not believe in that and in the Prophet So he, he went to Abu Bakr radiallahu an. He thought, Abu Jahal thought, if Abu Bakr hears about this, he will leave Islam. But the moment, no sooner had Abu Bakr radiallahu an heard about the events of Mi'raj, he believed in him without any question. This is why he was given the title of the Siddiq, the most truthful, faithful, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he has, he has, he had huge contribution to Islam. He spent all his resources in the battle of Tabuk. 
such an example of spending all means for erection of truth and justice is very rare nowadays. Now let's go to his second title of Atiq. He was also called Atiq because he was a person who was permanently free from the hellfire. Once Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, addressing him, Anta Atiq min nar you are free from the fire of hell. So hell fire is forbidden to touch Abu Bakr radiallahu an. This is why he is also called Atiq. After he was selected as the first Khalifa of Islam, he had to face some problems. The Muslim community was going through crisis and disorder. So immediately after took the charge of Khilafah, he addressed the people, the crowd, saying to them, saying, O oh people, you shall obey and follow me as long as I obey Allah and his Rasul. But if I do not follow the path of Allah and his Rasul, you shall rectify me. He said, oh people, you should remember that those among you who are poor, they are really strong to me as long as their rights are not restored. The poor among you is, or the strong the weak among you is, is the is strongest to me until I make sure that they have their rights fulfilled. Then he went on to say, those who are strong or those they are weak, they are those who are weak, they are the, those who are strong, they are weak before me till the share of the rightful claimants is not realized for them. So this is what Abu Bakr radiallahu an, his public speech to the people after the selection of his as the Khalifa of Islam. The reign of Abu Bakr radiallahu an is an ideal example for all rulers of all ages. Now let's have a look into his, into the problems that cropped up in the Islamic state or the Muslim state following the Prophet's demise. As soon as he took the office of uh, Khilafa Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he found some people claiming to be prophets. There are some people who claim prophethood. To the great surprise, there are also some women who said that from then on, the prophets would, be, would, would, would come from women. So those who claim to be prophet and prophetess, there, some of them was Musa al-Amatul Kazab, al-Aswad. And the woman, the lady who claimed to be a prophet or woman prophet was Saja. Her name was. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an fell into a horrible situation. Secondly, some people refused to pay zakat. They said they didn't have to pay zakat anymore. Zakat was to be give, was supposed to be given to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as long as he was alive. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was no more, so they, did, they, they would not like or would not want to pay zakah anymore. This is another big problem. And the last problem that was, is some people, a group of people, they renounced Islam. They went back to their previous religion of adultery. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, having heard and um, having faced all these problems, 
he confronted them very firmly. He said, those people who used to pay zakat to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu if now they deny paying zakat, I shall be fighting against those all. There is no way. They must be paying zakat as they used to give zakat to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this way, Abu Bakr radiallahu an saved Islam and the Muslims from an expanding crisis. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he was simple hearted, simple minded. But the moment when the question of the existence of Islam arose, he had to stand up and establish Islam in its right place properly. We likewise should conduct the state affairs with firmness and sagacity to save the land like Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And we will be able to save the nation from this order and chaos if we just follow the state affairs and policy that was adopted by Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his greatest contribution is this. Compilation, collection, and preservation of the Holy Quran. Boys, you know, when the Prophet وسلم, passed away, the Holy Quran had not been compiled in one volume, like a book. It was scattered on different places, on different materials. In the time of Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, a fierce fighting or battle took place that was conducted against the false prophets, as I told you earlier. And the name of that battle was the Battle of Yamama. In that battle, lots of Hafizul Quran, Hufaz, died. So Umar radiallahu an, seeing the situation, he was very, very terrified and concerned about the loss of the Holy Quran if the death toll of the Hufazul Quran continues like that. So he went to the Abu Bakr radiallahu an directly and advised him, that is Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he advised Abu Bakr radiallahu an to have the complete Quran compiled in one book, in the form of a book. At the beginning, Abu Bakr radiallahu an did not agree with Umar radiallahu an. He hesitated to do that. And he questioned Umar radiallahu an, Oh Umar, how can you do something that was not done by the Prophet sallallahu in his lifetime? He thought that this action would be part of bid'ah. But Umar radiallahu an, after explaining to him the reality of the situation, Abu Bakr radiallahu an was convinced. So he ordered, he called Zaid ibn Sabit radiallahu an, the best reciter and hafiz of the Sahaba, among the Sahaba, and ordered him to have the Holy Quran compiled in one volume, in one book. After being instructed by the first Khalifa of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Zaid ibn Sabit, he started to do his work. He went door to door, collected all the materials on leather, on tree barks, on clothes, wherever the scattered copies or writings of the Quran were found, he collected it and he compiled it in the form of a book. Before he finalized it, he consulted the other greatest reciters of Sahaba of the Prophet and checked with their memorization of the Holy Quran also. He asked them, 
to recite the holy surah and ayat from their memory and he completely matched their memorization and the right writings and then he compiled them in the, into one volume of book after the the work was done he submitted uh, the copy of those quran to the first khalifa of umar radiyallahu an umar radiyallahu uh, sorry uh, the abu bakr radiyallahu an Abu Bakr radiallahu an, before his death, he passed on this copy of the Quran to Umar radiallahu an. Umar radiallahu an, before he passed away, he gave it to his own daughter Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the holy of, the copy of the holy Quran. So this was the contribution made by the Abu Bakr radiallahu an to the preservation of the Quran. for which he has been given the title he has been graded as the savior of islam even after his election to the post of khalifa abu bakr radiyallahu an used to carry on his private trade as he was the khalifa of islam so we shall be always remembering abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anha and who as his greatest contribution to the preservation of the holy quran now let's move on to the next lesson umar radiyallahu an umar radiyallahu an we all know about him his bravery how influential he was he was a very strong person who never compromised as far as truth and justice concerned He was the second caliph of Islam. He was born in the Quraysh tribe in the city of Makkah in 583 CE. The name of his father was Khattab and his mother was Hantama. He was educated, polished and of honest disposition. In his youth he was a wrestler, brave warrior, poet and orator. He was a very influential person. Few people used to fear him, respect him. I'm just giving you one hint or a smallest part of his life. When people, uh, Muslims, were migrating from Makkah to Medina, everyone was migrating in secret. But Umar radiallahu an, he challenged anybody to stop him migrating to Medina. but nobody dared to prevent him this was umar radiyallahu an now let's go to the most interesting part of his conversion to islam at the beginning of islam or at the beginning umar radiyallahu an who was an arch enemy of islam he did not like islam and muslims he was a, uh, as usual other people One day he was on his way with an open sword in hand to kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On he on the way he came to know that his sister Fatima and her husband Said had become Muslims. He reached their homes in order to kill them. He assaulted them severely. He forced them to renounce Islam. but they would better die than give up islam such rigidity on their part moved him differently he became restless to embrace islam he reached to the presence of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam put his sword by his feet and said is the invitation o prophet of allah you are offering true the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yes islam is true then and then umar radiyallahu anhu embraced islam and said see his bravery his you know boldness no secrecy anymore from now onwards we will offer salat openly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became highly pleased and gave him the 
title Faruk, meaning the one who differentiates between truth and the falsehood. He accepted Islam in the sixth year of Hijri and the age of 33. So we find that Umar radiallahu an, his conversion to Islam is a very beautiful story and how Allah guided him. By the way, I want to relate to you one thing. Umar radiallahu an, he was, a, he was the answer to the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to Allah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu used to always ask Allah, pray to Allah to have two Umar, one of the two Umar granted to Islam. One Umar was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, and another Umar was Abu Jahl ibn Hisham. Though his real name was Abu al-Hakam, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his prayer, the dua of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was accepted for Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. So he was the outcome and fruit of the Prophet, of the dua of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now let's see how upright he was as a judge. Umar radiallahu an was the personification of fairness and justice. On legal issues, he would never discriminate between the rich and the poor, between the high and the low. A burning example of this is he punished his own son, Abu Shahma, very, very severely for the offense of taking wine. Umar radiallahu an was democratic minded, absolutely democratic minded. He used to consult the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu on all important political issues and attached great importance to their opinions. So Umar radiallahu an, he was a very judicious. I can give you a nice example of that. In the time of Umar radiallahu an, the governor of Egypt, Misr was an army general. His name was Amr ibn al As. So in the Egypt, once there was a race, horse race, arranged by the administration of the Amr ibn al As. In that contest, the son of the governor also participated, but he was utterly defeated. He did not win the contest or the race. So what did he do? After the person who won over the contest, he started beating him without anything uh, to ask. So the person who was beaten up by the son of the governor, he went to complain to the Khalifa, to the governor of Egypt, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an. So Amr ibn al-As did not find enough proven evidence, enough to prove that his son was guilty, or anyhow he missed it. So instead of punishing the, his own son, he through the man who complained to him in jail. But the man who was jailed, he was innocent. So somehow he managed to escape from the jail and he went to Umar radiallahu an in Medina and made a complaint to him. Hearing the whole story, Umar radiallahu an immediately called upon the governor of Egypt to see him in Medina. When governor of Egypt, Amr, Amr, Amr ibn al-As reached Medina, Umar radiallahu an asked him, what is the matter with this man? Tell me. 
So when the whole incident was narrated to Umar radiallahu an, he said, now I understand that your son was guilty and this person was innocent. Now, Umar, after that, Umar radiallahu an moved towards the person who was innocent that, how do you want justice now? The man remained silent. Umar radiallahu said, okay, take the whip and give him the number of whips that he gave him to you or till you are satisfied. The after having the permission from Umar radiallahu and the person gave, whipped the son of the governor and said, that is enough. And that was, he gave me the same. Then Umar radiallahu an turned to the governor of uh, Egypt and told him, why, who gave you the permission or who gave you the right to enslave people when they are born free? So this is the example of the judge as an upright judge and justice by Umar radiallahu anhu. I just cut the story short for the um, uh, abridgment of the time. Now let's go to the character of the Umar radiallahu an. Umar radiallahu an was the great model of equality and humanity. After his assumption of the charge of Khalifa, Umar radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, he became more glowing. He, to be specific, his human qualities. He would remain very alert in respect of what is true and what is false. He, he set up the department of police for gathering information about the condition of all subjects. For better discipline, he made provision for compulsory leave of soldiers after every four months. He arranged for digging canals for agricultural development. He used to roam about in alleys and lanes in the cover of darkness. And he used to see for himself the condition of the people. Umar radiallahu anhu, he used to go out at night, at midnight, and would see the conditions of the citizen under his rule. Once on hearing the cry of the hungry children, he personally carried flour to the poor woman's doorsteps. He took along with he, he, along his wife to a nomad stand to help his wife in her childbirth. No such benevolent ruler can be found in all the history of kings and mourners. Umar Radilan, who was the great model of equality and humanity. He introduced the provision of receiving public complaints against government officials on Friday at Juma prayer time, taking advantage of his, of this, a man made a complaint against Khalifa saying that while no one else could have one shirt made out of the cloth distributed from the Baitul Mal, how come that the Khalifa himself has put on a shirt made of it? Abdullah, the Khalifa's son re re relied or replied on behalf of his father that I offered my share of cloth to my father. So my father has a full shirt made for him. So this, so boys, we have come to understand that how important it is for us Muslims to follow the ideals of Abu Bakr radiallahu and Umar radiallahu an. Now it's time for you boys to question me on the topic if you have any relevant question, please. Feel free to ask any question that comes to your mind. I will be happy to, your answer, to answer to your question. I am available right now online, waiting for you to ask me so that I can answer you to the point. Well, this is the homework for you to be done at your home. You must go through this team with care and 
we will be answering these questions accordingly. There has been given a stim, and it's a very interesting story. I think you have heard of that. After carefully reading this story, you will answer question A, B, C, and D. What is Khalafa al Rashidun? Why was Abu Bakr given the title Siddiq? Explain the role of Umar radiallahu anhu as the as ruler in the Babu stream and analyze the overall integrity of character of Umar radiallahu anhu in the light of the stream above. So boys, do the homework accordingly in your notebook and collect all the homework in that notebook. Keep it with you and you give in when it is required to see from you. These are the next lessons, boys. Chapter 5, Lesson 6 and 7. Uthman and Ali radiallahu an. In the very next class, we shall be speaking about these two topics. Thank you so much, boys. This is the end of our class today. I hope you have learned from today's class and you will do the homework accordingly. Before I end the session of this class, I would like to remind you again, please stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. Until we meet next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.